All right, here we're going to look at another example of finding the radius and interval of convergence. So part B, we've got the series from 1 to infinity, x to the n times 5 to the n over n raised to the n. So we'll do the limit as n goes to infinity, x raised to the n plus 1, 5 raised to the n plus 1. And then we'll divide this by n plus 1 raised to the n plus 1 power. Uh, we're going to multiply by n raised to the n over x to the n times 5 to the n. And now we get to, again, just try to simplify this um, and make some sense out of all the limits. So we've got the limit as n goes to infinity. Let's see, x to the n plus 1 over x to the n will leave us with x to the first. 5 to the n plus 1 over 5 to the n, that's going to leave, with five, leave us with 5 to the first. And then we have this uh, n raised to the n over n plus 1 raised to the n plus 1 power. So now, uh, let's see, what would be the best way to uh, try to clean this lovely thing up? Well, let's see, we can pull the absolute value of 5x, uh, we can at least pull that out front. Then we have the limit as n goes to infinity uh, of n to the n again over n plus 1 raised to the n plus 1 power. All right, so what I'm going to do is, I think I'm going to uh, break this up. So I notice these are both to the power, you know, both involve exponents of n. So we could rewrite this as n plus 1 raised to the n uh, times n plus 1. So let's see, um, so that's five, the absolute value of 5x, the limit as n goes to infinity. Then let's see, we could write that as n over n plus 1, all raised to the n power, times 1 over n plus 1. Okay, well, certainly as n goes to infinity, um, here we're going to have 1 raised to the infinity, which is indeterminate. Uh, then we're going to have 1 over infinity, which is going to give us uh, a 0. So this part's clearly going to 0, but this portion I'm a little bit unsure about. So let's see if we can't figure out you know, what's going on with that limit. So we have the limit as n goes to infinity of n over n plus 1 raised to the n. So again, this is an indeterminate form. I think there's probably a little bit of algebra that we can do here as well. Um, a very little useful limit, if we take the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 plus 1 over n raised to the n, that equals e. Kind of more generically, if we put just like a, a constant k, this limit equals e to the k. So I think we may be able to use that in this case. Well, I can't really break this up, you know, this fraction up, but I, what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to be a little creative here. I'm going to write this as 1 over, well, we could write this as n plus 1 over n raised to the n. Again, just 1 over the fraction would flip it, and that would give us uh, that portion back. Again, you could use L'Hopital's rule on this. You could introduce natural logarithms and you do L'Hopital's rule. I'm going to uh, use this, this instead. So this is the limit as n goes to infinity. We would have 1 over, well now I can break up the fraction. n over n is 1 plus 1 over n. Again, this is all being raised to the n. So this is going to be the limit as n goes to infinity. Um, we would have 1 to the n, which is just 1. And then in the denominator, we would have 1 plus 1 over n raised to the n. And now we can use this little result, okay? So the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 plus 1 over n raised to the n, that's all just going to equal e to the first. So here we're getting 1 over e uh, for our limit. Perfect. So it says really we have the absolute value of 5x times, again, we said the limit as uh, of n over n plus 1 raised to the n, that's going to equal 1 over e. But then the second limit, that's going to approach... Um, well, it's going to get arbitrarily large, which means that the whole limit is going to approach zero. Perfect. So that says, after doing the uh, ratio test, it says our, we're getting zero out for our ratio. So again, we want this to be less than one. 
well, no matter what value we plug in for x, we're going to get um, 0, which is always less than 1. And what that now tells us is that our interval of convergence is all real numbers, negative infinity to positive infinity. And therefore, our radius of convergence would just be positive infinity.